Okay, so that's Gauss's law. But the question is, how do we use Gauss's law? So we're now going to go through an example um, on the way we're going to use Gauss's law. We just proved it, now we're going to use it. So, in this example, we are going to figure out the electric field that exists around and inside a solid uniform sphere with a charge, uh, charge big Q, a radius R, which is equal to little a, and it is an insulator. It's not a conductor. These are not terms we've, we've discussed yet this year, but you discussed them last year, so let's just review real quick. Who can tell me what either an insulator or a conductor is? Travis. Uh, <coughs> an insulator doesn't let an electric current flow through? Uh, well, I, to say it doesn't let it, it's, it's very difficult to get charges to flow through an insulator, and this, which is the reverse of a conductor. A conductor allows charges to flow easily, uh, electrons flow easily through a conductor, this is an insulator, so the charges are not going to move around. So the charges are going to be evenly spaced everywhere, and they're not going to move around in this insulator. So what we have is a charge with, it's a sphere with a radius A, and it has a charge positive big Q. That's the charge of this whole thing. And what we're going to start out by doing is figure out the electric field that exists outside the sphere. So we're going to use Gauss's law, which is the electric flux is equal to the closed surface integral of E dot dA, which is equal to the charge inside our Gaussian surface divided by E naught. We are going to use Gauss's law. So please tell me, what are we going to do next, Bill? Sure. We are going to use Gauss's law. So please tell me what we're going to do next, Bill. Uh, <laughs> oh, we gotta draw that thing. That thing, yes, that thing. Hopefully we're gonna draw that thing. Please tell me what that thing is called, Zach. A Gaussian surface. So we're gonna start out by drawing our Gaussian surface. Uh, we're sticking with the easy ones right now, uh, so we're going to do a Gaussian sphere as well. So this sphere is going to look like this, and we're starting out figuring out the electric field that exists outside this um, sphere of uniform charge positive Q, which that means that R, in this particular case, R is going to be greater than A. So we use <coughs> Gauss's law. Uh, sure. So E dot dA, what does the dot product mean for E dot dA? Potterup, what is E dot dA then going to be equal to? Um, EA cosine theta. EA cosine theta. I'm going to move it up a little bit. I need a little bit more space here. So we have the electric flux is equal to the closed surface integral of E dA cosine of theta. That's equal to charge inside divided by E naught. Okay, cosine of theta. We know the electric field due to symmetry is going to look like this. The electric field. Class, at this point, please point in the direction of dA, the area vector down at an angle right there, dA. Do one more. How about uh, this one? Sarah J. <laughs> so we have dA is going to be this room. Okay. What then, uh, Tyler, is the angle between dA and the electric field? Zero. Cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one, so we have E times dA on the left-hand side. What can we do? What's our next step? Um, Jake? Um, e is constant on the Gaussian surface. The electric field is constant on the Gaussian surface, so we can pull it out from the integral. So we have the closed surface integral of 
our E times the closed surface integral of dA. Class, what's the integral, closed surface integral of dA? A. So we have the electric field times A is equal to whatever we have on the right hand side. Now, on the right hand side, we have charge on the inside divided by E naught, charge on the inside divided by E naught, charge on the inside divided by E naught. What is the charge inside the Gaussian surface in this particular problem, doorstep? Uh, you've assumed that it's a that it's like an electron or something like that, which I did not say. This is just a uniform charge positive Q, which is just a an unknown variable. It's just a number. Help us out. Who can help me here? What's the charge inside the closed surface? I'm sorry, inside the Gaussian surface. Is it positive Q? It's just positive big Q, right? We don't know its value, but we know it is big Q. Okay. What is the area of the Gaussian surface? Miller. Four pi r squared. That's equal to Q divided by E naught. Uh, we missed an E there, the electric field. So the electric field then, if we solve for the electric field, which is what we're trying to find, we get that the electric field is equal to uh, Q divided by 4 pi E naught times R squared. Or if you prefer, 1 over 4 pi E naught times big Q over R squared. Boltzmann's constant. The electric field is equal to K times Q over R squared. It keeps coming up, doesn't it? So the electric field outside of a uniformly charged sphere is it acts like a point charge, point particle. Now, you may assume that any charged sphere acts like a point char par particle outside that sphere. You may simply write down, ah, I know it's a, it's a sphere and it has a charge, so I can say outside that sphere, the electric field equals kq over r squared because it acts like a point charge. Now, you might be required to derive it using Gauss's law as we did right there, but if you are not asked to derive it, please don't take the time to do so because that's something that you should know. Outside of a sphere of uniform charge, it will act like a point particle, and it's equal to kq over r squared. 